All right, welcome to this talk about unified text to SQL for data warehouses, spreadsheets, and CSVs. That's a pretty long and rough title, but we'll try to do something a little bit more comprehensible out of this talk. Um, I'm Alban, I'm a solutions engineer at Dust. And Dust is a company that's basically an AI operating system. So we help you build assistants uh, that are specialized with your company's knowledge attached. Um, that's, that could be a lot of different things. We've got a lot of bricks that you can attach. I'll talk to the, about that right after. And the good thing is that your assistants are embeddable everywhere because you, we have a pretty strong API and a dev platform. And so you can just embed, uh, like for example here, uh, this is Zendesk and you've got a Dust Assistant on the side so you, your agents can talk to your company data and even to other Zendesk tickets directly from Zendesk. Um, what bricks were I, was I talking about? Basically, you can add internal knowledge. We can add uh, semantic search, code interpretation, web search, transcription, et cetera, et cetera. But the one we're going to be talking about today is table queries. Basically, we want to be able to query tables out of just regular good old text. Let's start with a small demo. This is using an assistant that I built uh, that's plugged to our Snowflake warehouse. And I'm asking it to visualize the average number of messages sent on the Dust platform per day, uh, per week, actually, and differentiate the top 10 workspaces with uh, different colors and the rest with another color. What's happening there is that you can see that it's querying tables. It's telling us what it's doing. Um, then it's receiving the data from Snowflake, and it's building a React component. And then the React component is going to be interpreted by the, the code interpreter to build a pretty nice graph. Cool thing is that you see we have some exponential curve going on, um, so that's a good sign for us. If we open the tools that were used by this assistant, uh, we have some chain of thoughts happening, so it's telling us why it was doing this, and then we've got the SQL query that was used. You can see that the SQL was actually pretty long, and if you needed somebody to actually make it, uh, that would take a while, or a, a, a lot of SQL knowledge. Let's keep going in the conversation. Ask the same for active users, because we had the number of messages. Now we want the number of active users. And at the same time, we're going to ask the same for the most used assistants. It's moving, but that's the second thing I asked in the same conversation. So here, we're going to have three different graphs, one conversation, a lot of data points. And the cool thing is that the data points are not showing up directly in the prompt, because that would take way too much time to generate the components. Uh, we'll see how they, how they show up right after. What I really want to do here with the three graphs is to make one combined graph, with, well, one combined React component with um, actual buttons that are going to let me switch between all these components, all these graphs. So I'm asking that right now. It's going to build the components. And the cool thing is that it's going to reuse the data because we uploaded that as CSV files directly available to the, to the model. So here, it should zoom in on the files. Yeah, there we go. We've got the three files here, message, users, and agents. Um, and the React component is just creating the graph using the files with the data in it. And boom, we've got three graphs, nice buttons, and we can switch. No need to know anything about SQL. No need to know anything about coding. So, that was a warehouse, that was Snowflake. We asked one database for data. What if we want to use different sources from different places? Let's say I have a file with, um, a, on the Google Drive, my HR team has a file with the employees and their roles. And on the CSV, I've got the workspace usage of my users, and I want to know the roles that use Dust the most. That's a pretty good thing to know, because we want to know which teams are using it, which use cases they have, et cetera. So it's pretty cool to know from different places um, how to merge the data. So I'm building an assistant. Basically, an assistant is a set of instruction with tools attached. So here, my tool is query tables. And there is a little description of the tool that I built, which is info about users, activity, and roles. We'll see that right after. The pretty important part here is data viz that I ticked. If I want to uh, enable web search, for example, for that assistant, I just tick the web search box. And I would be able to ask, you know, um, how many medals each country won during the Paris 24, uh, 2024 Olympics, and that would graph it. But now I just want to use my own data. So my query table tool was built like that. So I've got my employee's role spreadsheet, which is a Google Sheet. And I've got my CSV of usage, which is something I downloaded directly on Dust from the Dust API. 
I'm going to ask this assistant, what are the roles of her top five users? Because that's exactly what I want to see. Well, I could say a top 20, top 100, whatever. Um, but the important part here is the SQL query that's showing up here. So it's basically just doing a regular Google old SQL query on two tables, and the two tables are the two files. They are coming from different storages, different worlds. They shouldn't be able to talk at the same place. Um, but here we just have a left join on the two files on the employee's email. And the result is that we've got the name, the user, number of messages, and role. So we've been able to merge two different files going from two different places just by asking. Okay, so how does this work? Uh, to know how it works, I need to talk a little bit about the dust architecture first. We've got a few components. The first one is called front. This is basically where the customers show up, API, web UI, et cetera. Um, that's connected to something called connectors. So whenever someone plugs data to dust, uh, if you decide to plug your Google Drive, your Notion, your Slack, et cetera, your GitHub or whatever, uh, it's synced through a connector. All that is synced to a Postgres database and stores, stores, stores the data. And then it talks to something called Core, which is a Rust application that talks directly to the LLMs and talks to the Quadrant database, which is a vector search database. That's how we do our rag. Okay, so what happens when I upload a file on Dust? So I can upload it from front. I just dump a CSV in the UI, for example, or I, I can upload it from a connector. Let's say I connected Google Drive, a new, a new spreadsheet shows up, and then I'm syncing everything. What we're doing is that we're unifying those files as a CSV. So whatever the, the original file input is, it could be a spreadsheet, a, a database, uh, a Google Sheet, it becomes a CSV and then we parse it and we try to find the column types. Um, from that, we try to find the actual column names that would be the easiest to use for the LLM. So we're storing it with different names than the actual file, just to make it more like easier to use for the LLM. We store all that in our Postgres database, and we call that augmented schema. Once the user actually asks the question, we send both of that to the LLM. We decide to send the augmented schema, the, the actual query. We send that as a, a language called DBML. Um, and we're going to send that to any model that can, has, uh, that can use function calls. So we're model agnostic, but for that, particular tool, um, we need function calls. And our function call is going to give us two different results, so structured outputs, basically, uh, a chain of thoughts and the query. Let's deep dive a little bit into that. So basically, what we're sending to the LLM is the full conversation history. That's what we saw. I just said, OK, do the same for users, do the same for messages. Um, then we see the augmented schema, which is the, co the documented columns that I just talked about. And if we find specific values, uh, if we find enums in the columns, we will send the specific values that are possible for a column as well to make the job easier again. And then we'll, we'll send some examples. So we take all the table heads, so all the files, basically, and we send the first 16 rows to the LLM just to make sure it's aware of the data structure. And then we do a structured output call. That's actually not true on our side because we built that before the structured outputs were available, so we're doing a function call, but now we could switch it to a structured output call. Um, and it's giving us three things. Chain of thought, which is the little purple squares that I was showing you uh, when I opened the tool and the, and the SQL file. Um, the result of the, the, the title of the file that you would download, if there's a, a file, because sometimes the user just asks a question, uh, a question and the, there's nothing to query, like the, it just asks something else than, than anything that's in a database. And the SQL query, again, or not. If we decide not to run a SQL query, we're not gonna run anything. Once we have the SQL query, we've got two different paths. Um, if it's a warehouse, so right now we only have Snowflake, but we'll get to Redshift and BitQuery. Uh, we just execute the query in the warehouse, get the result back. If it's a file, then it gets a little trickier. Um, we actually, spin up a just-in-time in-memory database. So it's a SQLite database that we spin up in Rust, so it's super fast. So the latency from the LLM is big enough so that we have time to spin up an, a, a database and feed it. And so we feed all the files in a database while the, the LLM is thinking, and then boom, the database is ready um, with all the files as a table, and then you can just do a, a left join uh, on any of the tables.
Um, okay, now we executed our query. What's the rest? It's fairly easy. We just store the query um, result as a CSV. We're going to upload it to S3 or GCS. Um, and basically, that's what I showed after, after that. If I want to build a component on, on top of it, the component can just use the file without having to spin up, like spit a, a lot of, talk, uh, of tokens. Because we started building that um, by just inputting all the, all the data points directly in the LLM. That was super expensive. Uh, and it was super slow because the, the, the LLM was building the entire component, spinning all the data points. Uh, using files is a lot easier. So just to make sure uh, the LLM understands the data structure of the result, we're going to show a few lines to the LLM as well. Um, then the LLM is going to be able to generate a, a pretty nice charting code. We use recharts and we're implementing D3GS as well. Um, this component downloads all the files, the CSVs, and there we go. We've got our graph. So basically, the goal of everybody in this place is to reach AGI, right? We're, we're, we're going to try <laughs> to rush to that. Uh, but I think we reached uh, natural language BI on our side. So this is used by a lot of non-technical teams to be able to do BI that they were not able to do before. Um, they could. They could likely do that with dashboards and stuff like that, but the time spent to build a dashboard compared to the time spent just asking a question to your, to your warehouse uh, or to like completely out of, um, out of range uh, files is, is really, really big. That's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll, let, I'll let it there.